بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم So now in this section we'll talk about a segment routing the future of MPLS So uh, before we get into the segment routing let me just quickly give an uh, prerequisite knowledge so at this point of time I expect you to already have some MPLS VPN concepts already L3 VPN at least to understand how the MPLS L3 VPN is configured with respect to the six steps what we generally use like configuring the IGP and LDP and then creating the VRF and all the stuff uh, including the VPN V4 configurations and then the redistribution these all these things so i expect you to already have some uh, exposure to the MPLS VPN configurations how exactly it does going to work and also some some overview of the MPLS traffic engineering as well so we'll be talking about the segment routing here which is a new labeling uh, technology which is going to enhance the working of ip and the mpls networks so to start with uh, let's see what is segment routing now now segment routing is a new label switching technology which is going to replace the mpls ldp part in the existing mpls networks now what this exactly means normally if you uh, remember inside the core network if you want to do end to end label switch path Uh, we need to make sure that we do assign some labels and they should be exchanged and that is completely done with the help of a separate protocol called ldp so the label distribution protocol which is responsible for generating the labels or again if you are using traffic engineering then there is an rsvp protocol which is again involved in the traffic engineering so what we are doing is uh, in the case of segment routing we are just replacing this with the segment routing which means we are saying that there is no need to run ldp but now the question is okay if you remove the ldp then the problem as we know it will break the end to end label switch path but the question is how the labels are generated how we are going to do that now for that we are going to use a new mechanism the new label distribution mechanism which will be integrated inside your ospf or iss protocols now what this means is we do have already inside the core we will be running any of the link state protocol whether it is an iss routing or the ospf routing so which means igp plays an important role in providing end to end reachability and in the previous case ldp was enabled on the top of it now what we are doing is we are no more using the ldp we are saying that we are going to integrate the label distribution mechanism inside the igp protocol your ospf and iss will be responsible for exchanging the labels so with this the completely it will remove the uh, remove the ldp dependency completely because uh, we do, and at the same time we don't need to run ldp because like you know ldp is a separate protocol we are going to enable for labeling and there is no need for additional protocol to be added inside the core so which means the simply the mpls core will be running without ldp so this way there are uh, many benefits like uh, if you just simply summarize the advantages what we get uh, without ldp means it is going to simplify your mpls core that's the first thing and the next thing is it is going to cut down the load on the control plane because again the control plane is involved uh, again the cpu is involved to to build that uh build the database for forwarding so probably it's going to remove that and also the other issue is normally there there are many cases like you need to have an igp and ldp synchronization issues because let's say in in the case of ldp let's say this is a transit path we are going to run igp and if any of the and this is the best route decided by igp and if any one of the interface is not running ldp then it will break the end to end label switch path because whatever the best route used by igp that path should be also enabled with label so by mistake or you know if there is any labeling issue in the transit path of the igp then it will also break your end to end communication process so that is called as ldp igp synchronization issues Uh, that can be removed means it will remove that issue 
And because here IGP is going to distribute the labels, so there will be uh, like kind of no more LDP and IGP synchronization issues will be there. So, which means here OSPF or ISS protocols, which we'll be using, uh, it has to be a link state protocol. And these, these protocols are taking the responsibility of doing the labeling job. So it's going to generate some additional advertisements, additional TLVs in ISS, we call it as, or LSS in the case of OSPS. So there will be additional or the new extension of these uh, TLVs or the sub TLVs will be added to the IGP protocols. So this will be added in order to ensure that your IGP that is your OSP of our ISS is going to advertise those segment routing labels. So again, uh, we, we, again, we don't use RSVP as well in the traffic engineering, we use RSVP that is also removed here. Now we can say that this is like a new extension, new and efficient way of uh, routing uh, because the segment routing here is going to use the new and the efficient way of the routing, which is more flexible and scalable. So it is flexible as well as the scalable compared to the previous uh, LDP based uh, labeling. So we can say like legacy MPLS technology. So which means the segment routing is itself is a MPLS technology. So it is just replacing the uh, just replacing the LDP, it's not going to replace your MPLS. So segment routing is again a part of MPLS only. So the next thing is like it's segment routing uh, is more flexible and scalable compared to the legacy. I think we already covered this. Uh, segment routing ac accomplishes the same thing what your uh, previous LDP does, the, does it for you. So at the end, you need to make sure that you have an end-to-end -end label switch path. That's something required. So the segment routing is again providing the same thing. So just removing the requirement of the LDP here. Now, other things are like uh, offer simplified MPLS traffic engineering. Like uh, in the in the previous, we I expect you to know some idea about the traffic engineering. It is uh, it is a method where we can efficient utilize the all the possible routes. So here we also have the traffic engineering concept, but totally RSVP is removed. So in the legacy method, we use an RSVP protocol, which is going to constantly update the available bandwidth. And based on that, it is going to see, okay, how many paths are available? What is the bandwidth available on that particular path? Uh, probably it's going to provide those details end to end. And again, this process makes your traffic link process a little bit slow. So with, uh, with the help of segment routing, so with segment routing, we will be using something called SDN or SDN controllers or based on the source uh, based, we can modify the path. Means you do have a controller uh, centralized from where you can define or modify what is the actual path it has to use, whether this path or this path based on multiple parameters like uh, if you know some SDN concepts, probably by sitting at the centralized controller, you can program which path it has to use out of two or three possible routes. And those can be decided based on which path is low latency path or, or it can program what is the available bandwidth or the guaranteed bandwidth required. According to that, it can decide which path it has to use when you have two to three paths. So which means here, we are going to use the traffic engineering offline, means traffic engineering is not done locally. It's going to be done uh, offline from a centralized controller. So uh, if you compare in, in the case of uh, older method, traffic engineering was uh, specifically done on those individual devices with an explicit path or fast route. Uh, there are there are traffic engineering with LDP are configured over there. So here also we do have a similar traffic engineering concepts. Uh, but mostly they are built in and they are renamed and we don't use RSVP in the new uh, traffic engineering, which we use with segment routing. So the same thing here, as I said, uh, it's going to support SDN network. 
which is going to be control ba controller based uh, man path manipulation process. So the segment routing is uh, getting more attention because of its flexibility as well as the scalability. And one of the major uh, feature is using or integrating with software defined networks. So which means with the, with segment routing and SDN, we can actually automate the path, which path it has to use based on the bandwidth, based on the latency, we can define those parameters. So automatically when you have multiple paths, you can do the traffic engineering from a centralized controller and you can automate the paths based on multiple factors like uh, you can you can automate the path calculation to avoid any congestions and you can also uh, you can also get the network real time visibility of your network utilization completely and even you can automate the provisioning and the optimization uh, optimization of the different traffic engineering paths uh, based on the utilization levels. So the segment routing is having uh, was built for SDN and is the foundation for application based engineer routing. So you can do that. So this is a quick overview of what is exactly SDN. Let's try to understand, uh, let's try to add some few more points relating to the SDN here, means uh, segment routing here, not SDN. So the first thing, uh, how the segment routing is going to work, like as I said, it is going to replace your LDP with IGP labels. So which means the IGP protocols and those IGP protocols, it has to be a link state and always PFR, ISS routing protocols. So these protocols will be responsible for generating the labels. And again, it will totally remove the requirement for LDP. So we don't need LDP. And this way we are going to uh, remove the additional load, additional protocol on the control plane. And also we are simplifying the core without LDP. At the same time, we are removing the LDP, IGP synchronization issues as well. And to do this, it is going to use some additional TLVs, TLVs or the LSS in the case of OSPF will be added, which is going to advertise that additional information along with the routing updates. Now, again, the protocol, whatever the protocols we are using, it has to be a link state protocol. So they do support because they need to have the complete view of the entire network in order to support traffic engineering or other things. And again, the same protocols like OSPF and ISS are going to assign the labels. And these IGP prefixes will be advertised normally, just like a normal IGP routing. Now, another difference here is the labels are assigned to the router, not to each route. So what this means is each device will be automatically assigned with a block of labels. Like here you can see the, the labels will be assigned and these labels are globally significant, which means there will be a one label for each router. So instead of uh, LDP, if you compare this with an older LDP option, we generally have a a separate label for each route. And likewise, every router will have a separate labels for each and every subnet and the exchange. So that creates a lot of confusion in, uh, generally. So that will be removed. So there is no more uh, separate labels for each network. So there will be one uh, globally unique label assigned for each router. So from the range, again, we'll talk about some terminologies called segment routing global block. Uh, there are some uh, node ID, node SID, adjacency ID. We'll, we'll be getting into these things a little bit in a separate section. But in my case, I just wanted to use some simple, uh, simple uh, options to understand how exactly the segment routing works. So we can say like segment routing is using the IGP in a more uh, new way or a fancy way of allocation of the labels. And then there will be something called segment routing uh, global database. Um, there is something called a global block. And this global block is a range of labels will be reserved for segment routing. We'll, we'll see these things. So totally it's going to replace and there will be a separate uh, label. I means there will be a label assigned for each, each router, not to the each route. 
Now the same label will be used for all the routers of that router, which means whatever the label assigned this, so it belongs to router one. So if any packet which is destined to router one, it uses this label and this label is globally unique, uh, which means uh, whatever the label assigned here, it will not be assigned to any other uh, device. Means we need to define those IDs and those IDs has to be unique. So there is no more locally significant labels. Now these labels are globally unique, uh, globally significant ones uh, compared to the LDP. In the, in the case of LDP, the labels are locally significant and they are being advertised uh, between them. But here the label will be assigned or uh, advertised to the to one interface called loopback. And that will be referred as a global label and defined from the range, whatever we define. And labels remains the same in the entire network, as I said, unlike LDP, in case of LDP, the labels are not same. So in the case of LDP, every router will assign the label for each and every network, and then they exchange with each other. Based on that, it's going to see outgoing labels. But in this case, the labels are exchange and the labels will be will not be swapped or will not be changed. So the labels remains the same here. So there's no more uh, swapping of the labels or changing of the labels as it is being advertised. So it's, it's going to be the same label and it is a globally unique label assigned for each router.